How to know if you have poor gut health. Sometimes it's not as easy as it sounds. Not all gut problems actually produce gut symptoms. If you can relate, then you are in the right place. I'm here to answer that question in today's video. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Dr. Kelly Shockley, doctor of cause, chiropractic, board certified in sports medicine and specialized in clinical nutrition. In this video, we're gonna go over the little known signs that you actually have poor gut health. There's more to it than just gas and bloating. Then we'll discuss the different ways of evaluating gut health and if they're actually worth it. This answer might shock you. And finally, I will be sharing with you four different types of foods that will have you heal your gut with every bite you take. You can honestly eat your way to better gut health and it's so delicious. Let's dive right on in. First, we're gonna go over the little known signs that you have bad gut health and it's more than just gas or bloating. So let's talk about that. So we have the obvious, like the upset GI system, whether it's gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, acid reflux, all of that. Those are definitely signs you probably don't have very good gut health because if you did, you wouldn't have those symptoms. But what else could actually be a sign? If you consume a high sugar diet, I guarantee you, you don't have good gut health. Sugar is really irritating to the gut. It creates the most amount of inflammation, the easiest in the body of all foods that are created. So if you consume sugar on a regular basis, even if you try to get off of it, then more than likely you have poor gut health. Another one that could suggest you have poor gut health is if you have unintentional weight gain or weight loss. Now, Unexplained or unintentional weight gain or loss is always something you should be sharing with your medical doctor because it can be a sign of a much bigger underlying problem. But it also can come from something as simple as poor gut health because if your gut is not functioning the way that it should, it's not being able to absorb the nutrients that you're putting in, which also relates to regulating blood sugars and then ultimately storing fat or not. Another sign that you could be dealing with poor gut health is issues with sleep or just feeling really fatigued. Part of the reason why this is, is the majority of serotonin, which is one of the main hormones that helps you with sleep and also stabilizing mood, is produced in the gut. So if the gut is not healthy, you do not have adequate levels of serotonin, which can show up in those sleep disturbances and extra fatigue. Another sign that your gut is really just not happy and health is definitely not adequate, is any kind of skin irritation. Eczema, I can't tell you how many times my patients have come in with eczema and all that has been given to them is a topical like steroid cream. Nobody's ever talked to them about their gut health. And I'm here to tell you, they are inseparable. If you have eczema, there is an underlying poor gut health issue, I promise you. Other skin lesions, you know, rashes and that may also be a sign because your skin and your gut, believe it or not, are actually connected. If things are not flowing through the gut the way that they should be and not being eliminated out of your body, your body could try to eliminate them out of your skin. So whether it's acne or it's eczema or other weird presentations and even hives, all could be a sign of poor gut health. Another sign you may have poor gut health is different food sensitivities and intolerances. So if you have food intolerances, part of the thought process is that that might come because the gut bacteria is not balanced the way that it should be, which ultimately means you have poor gut health too. And the last thing that could be a sign of poor gut health is any type of autoimmune type of disorder. All of them seem to be linked with gut health. So if you have an autoimmune disorder like Hashimoto's, it may actually be connected to an underlying gut health problem. Now I'm curious, did you know that any of those symptoms or lifestyles could actually be a sign of poor gut health? Just let me know your response down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Now we're going to get into the different methods for evaluating gut health and are they actually worth the investment? Probably the most common one that people know about are doing lovely stool samples and thankfully these can all be done mostly from home now. You can get some really useful information from that. But at the same point, we still don't completely have full appreciation for what we're looking at when we get these results back. Now, if you're just looking for blood, that is very valid and that gives us great information. If you are doing a microbiome test kit, my suggestion would be to hold off for just this moment. 
because the medical world and the research world is trying to catch up with the information that we are getting back. We do not have a clear understanding of all the different bacteria and how like there's bacteria that we all seem to have in our guts and then our gut microbiome is as unique to us as our fingerprints are. So we don't have enough appreciation. There are, I don't know how many thousands and thousands of these bacteria that live inside of your gut and we're still working to identify all of them. The one thing that I can tell you that we can appreciate from a microbiome test kit is what does the microbiome diversity look like? Which if you're not familiar with the microbiome, that is the ecosystem that lives inside of your gut and it regulates everything. They're finding that it actually has influence over all aspects of our health, including mood regulation, how our body processes food, how medications may be working. Like this ecosystem is incredibly important to our overall health and well-being. So here's the thing. One thing that we can appreciate is the more diversity of bacteria or types of bacteria that you have in your microbiome, the healthier you are going to be. The higher your threshold is going to be to not perceive things as a stress. The less diversity you have, the more prone you are to different types of illnesses and health conditions. There's something else that we are appreciating, and this gets a little technical, so hang in there with me. There are two main types of bacteria, the bacteroides, which are the superheroes, and the firmicutes, which is kind of like when you picture a little kid that's severely hyped up on sugar and how they're bouncing around and creating chaos, that is firmicutes. Between these two families of bacteria, here's what we're learning. Firmicutes are part of, like, if you have more of this type of bacteria in your gut, you generally will crave more sugars. And firmicutes, these type of bacteria are mean little guys. They actually will destroy other bacteria in your gut to rob them of their sugars. And ultimately what firmicutes does is because it's this carbohydrate seeking, you know, sugar craving bacteria, it actually is responsible for creating more fat storage in your body. So what we're realizing is that people who have a higher amount of these firmicutes type of bacteria in their gut have a more higher likelihood towards obesity. Now, bacteroides is the superhero of the gut. And it's the, they are totally the opposite of firmicutes. Bacteroides are actually more fat-seeking types of bacteria. Which the other thing with firmicutes, with sugar consumption, it increases the level of inflammation. Bacteroides, with being more fat-hungry, um, okay, decreases inflammation. And ultimately, people who have more bacteroides have less obesity. It's fascinating. I just want to know how to get more bacteroides into my life. The long and the short of it is, you can get some pretty cool information, but we still don't fully even know how to appreciate the information we're getting back. So I'll leave the is it worth it piece up to you with knowing this detail. Now, before I get into the four types of foods that will have you healing your gut with every bite you take, I just want to remind you to take a minute, subscribe to my channel down below, turn those notifications on. I am publishing videos every Monday through Friday, everything to do with gut health, brain health, boosting your immune system, and anything to help you achieve what I like to call total body mastery. So just take a moment, click that subscribe button, turn the notifications on. That way you do not miss out on a future episode. Awesome. All right. What are the four types of foods that you can start consuming on a regular basis that's going to start healing your gut with every single bite? Let's get into them. The first one would be high fiber containing foods. Average American is only getting like 10 to 12 grams of fiber every single day. And really you should be consuming at least 20 to 30 grams of fiber for optimal health. Now the high fiber foods are all of your vegetables and your legumes, leeks, you name it. We need a lot more of that into our world. So start consuming more high fiber foods. The second food type would be your garlic and your onion. Garlic and onion both are tied to boosting the immune system, which when you're boosting immune system, you're really boosting the overall level of health in the gut. That's where your immune system lives. 
So add more garlic and onion if they don't seem to irritate you, mind you, into your diet and allow them to help your gut be healthier. Food type number three would be all of those touted fermented foods. This is your kefir, your kimchi, sauerkraut, you name it, the kombucha teas. These all contain really good probiotics, which is part of putting the good guys back into your gut, into that microbiome. And oftentimes they are great prebiotics, which prebiotics are the food supply to nurture the probiotics or the good bacteria that are living in your gut. So I would make this a daily occurrence. Now here's a trick. If you don't wanna make these things on your own, do not buy sauerkraut or fermented food that's in the aisle where it's not refrigerated. Heat treatment destroys all of this. So the, the key with this is to stick in the perimeter, normally it's in the refrigerated section by the produce, where you can find non-heat treated and sealed um, kimchi and sauerkraut and pickles, you know, all your fermented foods are right there. And honestly, I think they personally taste so much better. So add like a bite full of sauerkraut every day, even if you don't love it. If you have a bite of sauerkraut every day, you are gonna start nurturing your gut every single time you take one of those bites. And food type number four is all of the collagen boosting type of food. Now, the one you're most familiar with is bone broth. There's not great information. It's still kind of anecdotal, but we already know that bone broth has all nature's goodness that we need to help heal and soothe a gut. It's very anti-inflammatory. It's got a lot of great good fats and proteins in there to help feed the body what it needs in order to be healthy and allow the gut to repair. So start adding in more bone broth, or you can even consume some different collagen sources themselves and just put it right to the source. Now, if you're sitting there wondering, how do you put this all together? Don't waste another minute on that thought. Click the description down below this video, allow it to expand and find the link that says seven day gut repair meal plan. This is a free gut repair meal plan that I have prepared just for you that once you click that link, you will have immediate access to. This meal plan has been designed for busy humans who do not have time to cook all day long, every single day, or for people who just really don't want to cook that frequently. There's more to life than spending time in the kitchen, right? So it has planned overs in it. It makes it very doable, very user-friendly and not time consuming. I have also put in a grocery list for you. That way you don't even have to think twice about what you're supposed to get. And the recipes that are included in this seven day gut repair meal plan are easy peasy to make. They don't have great amounts of new, they don't have numerous ingredients in them and they do not take much time to prepare whatsoever. So make sure you click the description down below and look for the link that applies to the seven day gut repair meal plan and get access to that immediately. I appreciate you being here. It's been so much fun. Can't wait to see you on the next episode. God bless.